Hi, my name is uh, Justin Pettit. I uh, work on the uh, Open vSwitch project. Um, I've been involved uh, in Open vSwitch from the beginning. I was one of the original contributors. Uh, I also was uh, one of the original authors of the OpenFlow specification and the OpenFlow reference implementation, <clears throat> and a founding employee of Nasira. So I've been working on this stuff for uh, quite a while. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Is that better? Okay, good. All right, so. Um, so Open vSwitch is a uh, project has a uh, uh, virtual switch that um, that has a lot more features than like the Linux bridge. Um, it has um, things like NetFlow, IPFix, SFlow, um, span, spanning, <clears throat> and then uh, you can also implement fine grained ACLs and QoS policies with uh, OpenFlow. Uh, and then in addition to OpenFlow, there's also a, a central management protocol that can be used to um, to configure. Um, the configuration database. Uh, it also supports port bonding, LACP, and uh, various tunneling. And it works on a number of different platforms, including Linux and FreeBSD. The, um, it's written uh, with an Apache 2 license, except for the kernel module, which is GPL because of uh, obvious restrictions. And um, it's something that it's, um, a lot of people aren't aware of is that Open vSwitch is used in a lot of hardware switches as their OpenFlow stack. Uh, so the architecture is done in such a way so it's easy to port to uh, new soft switches, um, but also to uh, hardware switches as well. So the, uh, the project has picked up quite a bit of steam over time. Um, you know, roughly, uh, these are the different mailing lists that we have. The discuss is more for uh, general users who have questions, um, you know, like user level questions. Uh, announce is where we announce new versions of uh, OVS. Um, all the development happens on the mailing list, so the dev mailing list is where that happens. So we do the, do the code reviews there, uh, and then when things get committed, uh, there's a get mailing list. So all of this stuff is uh, visible on the openvswitch.org mailing list. Uh, I saw yesterday that there was a OpenStack um, user survey, and about 48% um, of deployments said that they use OpenVSwitch. So it's uh, got quite a bit of support. We've had a number of uh, contributors. This slide's a little bit old. I noticed this morning that VMware wasn't on there, so I added that. But uh, otherwise, um, you know, there have been a lot more contributions since then. All right, so we'll get into the, the architecture of OBS. There are three main components, which are the parts in blue. Uh, and then there's uh, up here in the um, upper part is the control cluster. So that could be an OpenFlow controller, a OBS DB manager, um, and so they, you know, all of this, all of OBS is configurable remotely. Uh, in addition to uh, locally on the box. So OVS DB server uh, is the component that has the configuration database. Uh, so this is uh, stateful or information that uh, will survive a reboot. Uh, it's configuration for things like bridges and interfaces. Um, OVS vSwitchD is sort of what you really consider the, the core part of OVS uh, that does all of the, the handling of flow setups and things. And then there's a kernel module that uh, is just really a cache of recently seen traffic to uh, improve performance. And, and so then this slide also has the different um, communication protocols that, uh, that, the, that the different components use to uh, talk to each other. So the configuration database is the first component I'll talk about. So it's OVS DB server. Uh, as I mentioned, it has the switch level configuration, uh, with, so things like uh, create these bridges, attach these interfaces to these bridges, uh, create new, um, create tunnels and attach them to bridges. Uh, it also defines where you would do things like um, configure OVSDB and your OpenFlow controllers. Uh, as I mentioned, that the, the state that's stored in the database is durable, so it's actually written to disk. The uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the integration always does that. So for example, on Zen server on reboot, they blow away the database and they recreate it from their own Zen store. Um, to recreate configuration, but OVSDB server itself actually stores the, the configuration uh, you know, forever. And so this is an actual database. Uh, it has these properties like a database. Um, uh, one area of the, uh, the implementation is that it's, a, uh, it's log based, meaning that rather than just store the state of the database, it has the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it has all the changes that have happened to the database, which makes it very useful for debugging because as someone makes changes uh, to the database, you can see what those are and figure out how you got into that state. And I'll provide an example of that a little bit later. Uh, the protocol that OVSDB server speaks is OVSDB, 
uh, and it's a protocol that is, it's JSON RPC based. Uh, it's in the process of being a uh, informational RFC, the IETF, and so it's available out um, you know, on the IETF website. So the, the database uh, consists of a number of tables. Um, I've highlighted here um, the main ones that you usually interact with. There are, um, there's a full entity diagram available in the ovsvswitchd.conf.db man page. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, these are kind of the core ones, as I mentioned. So the open vSwitch, there is always um, an open vSwitch table. It only ever has one entry. And then it contains pointers to things like bridges. So if you create a bridge, a new row will be added to the database. If you um, add a port to that bridge, there will be, um, you know, some, the port will be added to the interface table and then, a, um, and then another one to the port and then to the bridge. And so it links all the way back. And so we have this um, extra layer here between ports and interfaces. So if you want to implement something like a bond, the bond is defined in the port. Uh, and then the interface would contain the different uh, physical interfaces. So if you had a bond zero, that would be in the port table. And then if you had it, if it consisted of ETH zero and ETH one, um, then there would be two different interface records that would, um, that the port would, would point to. Oh, and uh, let's see. One thing I forgot to mention on this is this OVSDB server. At the bottom, I mentioned the tools um, that can be used. There's a lot of utilities in OVS uh, to, uh, to configure the system and look at the state of the system. Um, so at the bottom, uh, these OVS VS Kettle, OVSDB Tool, OVSDB Client, OVS App Kettle are all um, things that can be used to interact with the database. Because sometimes it can be a little overwhelming when you first use OVS. So OVS VS Kettle uh, configures um, OVS. So if you've used OVS, if you want to create a bridge, you probably use this OVS VS Kettle add bridge command. And what add bridge or what OVS VS Kettle is, is just a front end to the database. So it has a concept of how OVS works, and then it translates those into OVS DB calls. So it's really just a high, um, a high level interface for the database uh, with uh, some um, convenient things like to add bridges, add ports, the, um, it also has some low-level commands for configuring the database, like this OVS VS Kettle list will um, show all of the, the columns in the database and all of the, the, uh, the rows. Um, as I mentioned, um, the, for managing the database, there's this OVS DB tool, and the show log command will show you um, all of the changes that happen to the database. So here's an example of running the OVS DB tool show log command. Um, as you can see here, there are, um, it shows the different records. And so this is an example of Zen server adding a port to a bridge. And so the, uh, the, the number is record, record three uh, shows you know, which, um, which change it was in the, in the log, uh, has the time of the change. And then there's this caller's comment, which um, somebody who is making calls to the database uh, can can provide context about what's happening. So, for example, you know, if you're this is uh, doing a bunch of things, it's adding a uh, making sure that the bridge exists, it's adding the interface, and then it's providing a bunch of information about the interface. And that can be very difficult to to look at the the actual changes to the database and determine what's happening. Um, so, this is something that um, whoever implement or whoever is making the call can provide this information. So, by default, OVS VS Kettle uh, provides the the command that was um, handed to it um, so that you can know what it did. Um, if, some, if you were writing your own um, thing that speaks the OVSDB protocol, I'd recommend doing the same thing. Like that's what we've had our controller team do um, so that you can provide context about you know, what you did. And so then when you go back and you're trying to figure out, you can see, you know, oh, these, these changes happened locally. These happened from the controller. And this is what the controller was doing. It saves a lot of finger pointing because you can actually see all the changes that happened. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, the database changes are actually the modifications that happened to the database itself. All right, so uh, now we'll talk about the forwarding path. So in, in the Linux bridge, it's a learning bridge, so its uh, requirements are fairly low. Uh, so what it does is it receives a packet, you know, it looks at the uh, source MAC address, it um, possibly learns it, then it looks at the destination address and then figures out where the port should go. And so all of that can be done in the kernel. Uh, you know, it's just a it's just a fast lookup that happens there. 
sorry. The uh, PowerPoint just crashed. So uh, in OVS, the design is different. So the, what we wanted to do is make the kernel as simple as possible. This also has made porting a lot easier because since the kernel module is so small, if you wanted to, to port it to a new system, the amount of work that you have to do is, is, um, is a lot less because the complexity is in that OVS v switch D process, which is much more portable. And so, the, um, so what happens is the, the kernel module is really just a cache of recently seen traffic. So a packet will come in, it will go to the, you know, the, it'll arrive on the interface, be handed to the OVS kernel module. The uh, kernel module will look up in its tables to see if it knows what to do with the packet. Um, if it knows what to do, it applies the action. So if it's just a forward action, it would then send it out the appropriate interface. If it doesn't know what to do, then it sends it up to OVS vSwitchD, which has the complete configuration. And so there'll, there'll be more information on that coming up here. So OVS vSwitchD is the, uh, the, the core component of the system. Uh, it speaks up to the controllers with OpenFlow. Uh, it speaks to the database server over the OVS DB protocol uh, that we mentioned. Um, you know, it communicates with the kernel module over Netlink on Linux. Uh, and then it has an abstraction to deal with interfaces as well. Um, uh, OVS vSwitchD can support multiple bridges so that you could create you know, BR0 or BR1. It has a concept of that. It's not necessarily realized that way in the data path, but OVS is responsible for making sure that things are wired properly and forwarded properly. The, uh, as I mentioned, the kernel module is relatively simple. And so what we want to do is vSwitchD has all this complex information, possibly very complicated flow tables, and it needs to figure out uh, an efficient way to represent that in the kernel. So what we did in older versions, which is just easier to explain right now, is that we always created an exact match entry. Uh, so that way, when a packet arrives, all we had to do was pull the headers off, throw it against a hash table, and if the entry was found, uh, we would forward the packet, and if it, uh, if it wasn't found, then it gets sent up to user space. So the controller was, res or the, sorry, vSwitchD was responsible for pushing those flows down, or for managing the flow table in the, the kernel. Um, and so as I mentioned, the OVS vSwitchD uh, implements you know, things like mirroring and bonds and VLANs. Uh, and also has the open flow tables. Uh, and then it's responsible for uh, managing those data path flows. So the commands that you use to deal with OVS vSwitchD are typically OVS OF kettle and OVS app kettle. I'll, I'll get into those a little bit later. So the kernel module uh, is what does the uh, switching and tunneling. Uh, and it's a fast cache, as I mentioned, of entries. So the, the flow table or the configuration of the switch can be very complicated. So we routinely see uh, flow tables that have tens of thousands of entries in them. Uh, and so these, it's very complicated and very expensive to figure out what to do with the packet on a, you know, when the flow table is that complicated. So vSwitchD um, makes a much simpler flow that it can push down into the kernel that the kernel is able, it's just essentially a cache. Um, and so in order to do that, then we don't, um, we don't want to have overlapping flows because you just want to be able to quickly um, find the flow entry and know what to do with it as opposed to you know, having priorities and figuring out what to do with the packet. Um, and so, as I mentioned, it's, um, the flow entry looks a lot different than open flow. Uh, so it doesn't know anything about open flow. It doesn't do expiration. All of that stuff is handled by vSwitchD. We've really tried to make the kernel module as simple as possible, which allows, it gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of adding new features to vSwitchD, and then it makes porting to other systems a lot more straightforward. And then the other main responsibility of the kernel module is to implement tunnels. So I've already covered the, um, most of this about how the user space processes packets, um, but what the, <coughs> When a, a packet will miss in the kernel, it'll get sent up to user space for processing. Uh, we call the thing that has the open flow tables the classifier. Uh, and as it's running through the classifier, through all these open flow tables, because the, you can resubmit to other tables or back to the same table to figure out what to do with the packet, we, um, we accumulate the actions. So if it's, you know, um, modify this packet uh, and then forward it out this, um, this interface, then those all get accumulated and then that become, it figures out what that, uh, fast cache entry should be that gets pushed down into the kernel. Uh, as I mentioned, in older versions of OVS, 
the, um, we only had a single uh, flow table in the kernel, uh, which was exact match, uh, so that, uh, which was very efficient to look up because we only had to do one lookup. But it had the problem where if, let's say, someone had configured a, just to do L2 learning, since all of those flows are exact match, if someone did a port scan, um, every one of those different ports would end up being a miss in the kernel and get sent up to user space. And so then the performance would, would take a big hit. Uh, so, um, and I'll, I'll get into it a little bit, well, I'll just get into it now since I already discussed it. So in uh, version 1.11, we introduced a feature called Megaflows, uh, which has support for wildcarding now. And so what, what vSwitchD does is it looks, it de dynamically determines based on the configuration how much wildcarding it can do. So for example, if you implement a policy that just says do L2 learning, uh, then it will only match on the MAC addresses and, the, and it needs to look at the ether type, but also the ether type. Um, but then everything else will be wildcarding. So that, that example that I gave earlier where someone would do a port scan, it no longer results in every one of those new ports being sent up to user space for processing. And with that, you know, if you just do normal L2 learning, we now see performance that's on par with the Linux bridge, which was a, a huge, huge improvement. I mean, it's an orders of magnitude improvement over what we saw um, before Megaflows. Uh, so for, uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, the kernel module also implements tunnels. Uh, tunnels are, uh, in OVS, uh, typically are just um, configured as uh, ports. So if you uh, receive a packet, you know, if a packet comes in on a tunnel, it just shows up on a, it gets an open flow port number, uh, and then it becomes part of the, the lookup for that flow. And if you want to send it out a tunnel, then you would just output it out that port, which would then put it in a tunnel. Uh, so the, uh, the tunnels that are supported, uh, Currently, are GRE, VXLAN, and Lisp, um, but there are other ones that are uh, that are, are being developed as well. The uh, in the kernel, um, then there's a command uh, OBS DP kettle show uh, that will um, the, because the interfaces are implemented in OBS, they're not actual interfaces like on Linux. You don't see them with an if config, so they're only visible if you run uh, OBS DP kettle show, which I'll provide an example of that later on. Um, that that all uh, shows the configuration of the data path. <coughs> so uh, go through some of the utilities now. So the uh, for configuring OVS, there's a command called OVS OF kettle, and that actually speaks OpenFlow uh, to the switch. Uh, just you know, it, like VS kettle spoke OVS DB, the OVS DB protocol. Um, OVS OF kettle speaks the OpenFlow protocol uh, to to the switch, but just as over a local socket typically. And so with OVS of kettle, you can do things like dump the flow table, add a flow, delete flows, all of that. Um, we've added a number of extensions to OpenFlow. Uh, so th um, there's some examples here. But a lot of them, you know, we've been, we're pretty involved in the OpenFlow process. And so what we ended up doing, being, becoming was sort of an incubator for new ideas. And the ones that were good have now been added to, uh, to uh, later versions of OpenFlow. So for example, uh, in older versions of OpenFlow, there were a fixed number of fields that you could match on. But we, we started needing to be able to do things like match on the tunnel key. And there was just no way to do it without uh, redefining the uh, OpenFlow specification. So we came up with an extensible match format that we called NXM. Uh, and then in version 1.2, it was adopted by the um, Op OpenFlow Networking uh, Foundation. Um, so there, a lot of the, the ideas that have come from OVS now have started to uh, drift over to OpenFlow as well. Uh, I'll get into this thing about uh, hidden flows later, but uh, the, the flow table that you see through OpenFlow isn't necessarily the flow table uh, that, that is actually being maintained by the switch, but I'll get into that. So here's an example of running the OVS OF kettle show command for a particular bridge. And uh, the, the reason I'm showing this is to, um, this is, these different rows are showing the, um, the different interfaces that are attached to a bridge. So I'm saying, show me, the conf show me um, what OpenFlow knows about this bridge. And so in this example, it's saying that ETH0 um, is on OpenFlow1, and then there's all this state about the interface. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight is those OpenFlow port numbers, uh, because they're going to become uh, important later on um, uh, when we talk about the, the uh, user space open flow versus the data path flows because those numbers are not necessarily uh, equal. Uh, here's an example of running the, uh, 
OVS OF kettle dump flows command. Uh, so by default, when you start OVS, uh, there's just one flow entry, which just says, uh, for any packet that arrives on any interface, do normal processing, where normal processing is uh, doing L2 learning. Um, so if you want to do, implement something more complicated, uh, then what you do is, the first thing you do is delete that flow, and then you would uh, push down the flow configuration that you want. Uh, but, uh, and I'll provide an example later on with the slightly more complicated flow table. Uh, I'm not gonna get into a lot of details here on the hidden flows, but I just wanted to mention it because sometimes it can, it can trip you up as you're doing, uh, doing development. So we have, uh, the, the one that we've typically run into issues with is in-band control. And so the idea with in-band is that you need to be able to um, have your switch communicate with the open flow controller. And, but you wanna make sure that the controller can't push down flows that would prevent it from communicating with the, the switch anymore. So we have these higher priority rules if in-band control is enabled um, so that the, that always trump what the controller would try to push down. And so we implement them as um, higher priority than can be represented in open flow. Uh, and so we've been, we've been burned by this a few times because you know, if we do something like, I think um, OpenStack does something similar where you have an integration bridge and you have all these things plugged into it and then you want to program what happens, you can have a packet come in and it will do normal processing to the packet and then you can introduce loops even though you've configured it. And so there's, there's ways that you can disable the um, uh, in-band control. It's on by default, but there's a, there's a row in the database or there's a configuration option in the database to disable that on a per bridge basis. Um, but if you're trying to debug that sort of issue, you can run uh, OVS app kettle bridge dump flows which prints all of the flows in the flow table, even the ones that can't be seen normally through OpenFlow that have that high priority. Uh, there's a file in the uh, OVS distribution called internals that documents this in, um, in great detail. Um, but it's, it's fairly subtle, actually, how we had to implement the in-band control. So the uh, kernel data path, uh, the, the OVS DP kettle utility is used to communicate with the data path. <coughs> Uh, you can uh, see the configuration of the data path with the OVS DP kettle show command. Uh, and then you can look at the flow table that OVS vSwitchD had pushed down into the data path with OVS DP kettle dump flows. And I'll, I'll provide uh, examples of both of these. So here's an example of the uh, OVS DP kettle show. The, um, the, the output here is showing that the that lookups is showing how many packets or what happened to the when we were looking them up in the flow table. So the hit count is showing um, was there a match found in the data path. The missed count is saying well we couldn't find an entry so we sent it up to vSwitchD, and then the lost count is showing that um, that vSwitchD never processed the packet and so it ended up falling off of a, it wasn't able to be placed on a queue and so that packet is lost forever. So ideally you want that to be, to be zero. Um, but it's useful like you know, if you're seeing flow setup performance issues then you can um, look at that loss count. If you see that number going higher then there's, there's issues with um, vSwitchD not keeping up with the, the kernel module. Uh, so then the, um, in addition there are the different ports as I mentioned, so this is the same switch. So I showed with the open flow, the OVS OF kettle show command. And so the, the port numbers are different. So in, uh, on the uh, OF kettle, ETH0 was on port one and um, ETH1 was on port two. We can't map those one to one because in the data path, there is one, it just has one flow table. There's just one data path, regardless of how many bridges that you've configured. And so in OpenFlow, there are certain port numbers that map to things. And so um, we can't do a one-to-one -one relationship between, um, between ports in uh, the user space and in the kernel. And so this becomes an issue uh, when I show some uh, debugging slides later on about how, uh, can, about um, being able to, uh, when you're, you have to be cognizant of if you're talking about an OpenFlow or data path port. Uh, all right, so then Here's an example of OVS DP kettle dump flow. So this is the, uh, the flow table that's in the kernel. Uh, as I mentioned that prior to 1.11, the flow entries were always exact match. And so you can see here the definition of the flow. So even though this uh, user space was configured with just to do normal processing, 
we're still matching on, this is an ICMP, a ping packet, uh, we're still matching on the um, ICMP type and ICMP code. In OVS 1.11, when you run this command, there's a slash and then a mask. And so you can see here that the mask is showing zero for um, everything in the uh, layer three addresses up. Uh, and so, um, so OVS app kettle uh, is uh, another uh, utility uh, that uh, is used to uh, invoke, to make changes to the, uh, or to uh, query the runtime of the switch. By default, if you don't specify uh, a target, it communicates with OVS vSwitchD, but you can also change the, the target. So you could say dash T OVS DB server and, uh, and talk to OVS DB server with the app kettle command. And so each OVS daemon has a set of commands that are unique to it. And so if you run the OVS app kettle help command, it will show you what's available. But they're also documented in the OVS, um, uh, is for any of the daemons that it documents what the app kettle commands are that it supports. But all of them support um, the help uh, a version, which is showing the runtime version of the daemon that's running. And, a, um, and then you can configure the, the logging level of the, the switch too, or of the, of the uh, daemon. So I'm gonna provide a, show an example here of, uh, of using the app kettle command uh, for debugging a flow table. So as I mentioned that the, the flow table can become quite complex. So you know, we routinely see uh, systems that are running tens of thousands of open flow flows. And so when you have a packet, it can be very complicated to know what's gonna happen because if you're uh, going between lots of different tables, uh, resubmitting to the same table, understanding what's happening um, can be very difficult. So I'm providing an example here of a kind of a, not a good implementation of a, uh, a firewall. So in this, what I'm gonna do here is um, black, block all TCP traffic except for that's going to port 80. So this first flow is saying that if the packet comes in and it's TCP, uh, resubmit it to 4000, which means that you resubmit it back to the same open flow flow table, but you're changing metadata so that you can match it differently. So the, what the 4000 is saying is um, change the ingress port so that when you look it up next time, that will be the ingress port of the traffic. So the next rule, uh, I'll be a little clear here, where uh, we're saying, you know, we have the, the flow, it's at the same priority. Uh, it's going to, uh, this time though, we said it's port 4000 because it's that resubmitted flow. Um, and then if it's, um, the destination port is 80, then we do normal processing, which means just forward the packet out. Um, but we don't have any other rule for uh, ingress port 4000. So if uh, a packet came in that was, it was TCP, um, it's going to get resubmitted with that ingress port of 4000, but this time there's not gonna be an entry found. And so what we do when there's no entry is we drop the packet. So we're gonna do, uh, be enforcing uh, the, uh, this policy, um, enforcing that uh, only port 80 is allowed by this one rule that allows port 80 and then anything else that was TCP gets dropped. Um, then for any other traffic, we have a lower priority rule that says, that essentially says if, because the higher priority matches TCP, if it's anything else, then it will um, just do uh, normal processing. And then traffic that comes back on the other, from the other interface, we just say do normal processing. And this will, this will be a little clearer in the example. So um, there's this utility, um, or there's a command supported in app kettle called OF proto trace. And you can hand it one of the kernel flows. So when we did the OVS DP kettle dump flows, uh, you, you know, we had all of those um, exact match entries or starting in 1.11 wildcard entries. You can hand them to OF proto trace and it'll tell you what it's what happened to the packet. So in this example, you know, I put the OVS um, app kettle OF proto trace and then quotes a description of the, the flow. And there's a bunch of information here, but the one that's, um, but what we're looking at is the stuff where there's the, the uh, red writing. So we, so it was an ICMP packet, so it was a, it was a ping. And the rule that we matched is that uh, the applied open flow rule, which was that lower priority uh, 90 rule um, and then they had the set of actions that were normal. And so, um, so that was the kind of the user space processing that we did. And then down in that, after that blank line um, is the configuration of the data path. So there's a description of the flow that we would push down into the kernel and what we did with the packet. So in this case, you know, when you have a ping, you can see that 
that was the rule that we matched, and then this was the set of actions. This is what we would implement, actually, uh, or what would happen to the packet. Uh, here's an example of the of uh, TCP, and so this is a traffic that's going to port 80, and so the the first in that first block, you'll see that we match the rule that says um, if it's um, priority 100 in TCP and ingress or and the ingress port was one, uh, then the action is to resubmit it to 4,000, and then that in that indented block, we then do another lookup, and then we match the flow entry um, that said uh, that that said if it's TCP port 80, then just do normal processing. And then, and then after that blank line, you can see what would happen in the data path, which is that we um, apply the, that we just send it out port three. And this is where I was talking about that the open flow and the data path ports can be kind of confusing. So in this example, uh, the ingress port is one, which is the open flow rule, uh, but then the data path action is we're sending it out port three, which if you remember was ETH one, which in open flow is port two. So it's a, you have to be, once again, you have to be aware of if you're looking at the open flow or the data path when looking at the ingress ports. Uh, and so then here's an example where we send traffic, TCP traffic that's not to port 80. So in this example, I sent a packet uh, that is going to um, uh, port 100 and we, uh, once again, we match that it's TCP so that it gets resubmitted um, with that ingress port 4000. Um, but this time we didn't find a, a flow entry. And so then we um, automatically just drop the packet. And so then you can see that the data path action was dropped. So this has been one of the, the utilities that our controller team really likes using is being able to figure out what happens because you know, they may have you know, 20 different resubmits and uh, you know, tens of thousands of entries and then figuring out what's going to happen on a packet, why a packet got dropped or why it got poured out the interface can be very complicated. And so um, OF Prototrace is very useful for, for that. All right, and then uh, logging, there's a um, uh, OVS app kettle command for configuring logging, as I mentioned. And so the, um, you can, by default, as I mentioned, it will change the logging of OVS vSwitchD, uh, but you can change the target and, change, and, um, and do it for like OVS DB server or any other daemon that's running. Uh, so the, um, and then the, the log target, or the logs um, for the, the different um, components um, are gonna change from, uh, obviously, from uh, like OVS vSwitchD to OVS DB server. So they'll all be different uh, depending on when you do the um, OVS uh, app kettle vlog list or, or set. So log files by default will be stored in bar log open vSwitch. The usual ones that you would look at are in uh, OVS vSwitchD.log and OVS DB server.log. Uh, we also store some information just in the, in the system log files, which will typically be in bar log messages. And then the configuration database, as I showed, is essentially a, uh, essentially a log as well because you can run uh, that show log <laughs> command and then see what, what happened to the to the configuration, how it got into the state that it's in. All right, and so then the last uh, last thing is just you know, if there are any questions, um, I'll be around later, or if we can you know open up the floor uh, in just a minute. But also, uh, the documentation tends to be very good in OVS. We try to keep it up to date. Um, we also have a fact, so please check the fact before you um, send a, a question to the mailing list, and then. Uh, you know, if all of that fails, then you can just send a message to the discuss at openvswitch.org mailing list and uh, ask your question. We try to be pretty responsive. All right, that was all I had. I don't know if there are any, any questions. All right, thanks. I'll be around if anyone wants to talk. Thanks.